Hey, what's up guys? So, do you like comics? I like comics. And as a comic fan, have you ever been flipping through a comic book or graphic novel and you see a piece of art and you think, my God, how did that get through into print? How did nobody catch this? Why didn't anybody fix this? How did such a great artist draw such a piece of garbage? Well, today, I'm gonna be going through my comic collection to find the absolute worst pieces of comic book art. Look, this happens to great artists all the time. Every single comic book artist, except for Alex Ross, has one drawing, one piece, one single frame that just isn't good. So I dug through my collection and pulled out some of the worst pieces of comic book art that I own. And today, I'm gonna rip them apart. Nah, not really, but this should be fun. And keep in mind that I only looked through my comics for about 45 minutes, so I didn't even look through a fourth of what I have, so this is gonna be, these are gonna be multiple videos. This is just one of many to come because I have a lot more comics to go through and this is just what I found in about an hour. First up, we're gonna be looking at one of my favorite comics of all time, 1986's Daredevil Born Again, illustrated by David Mazzuccelli. You know, even though this isn't my favorite style of comic book art, I do think it works for this book. And even though it is kind of scribbly, it's intentionally messy. And I mean, oh my God. Okay, so I understand what he's trying to convey here. Karen is addicted, she's on drugs. She's supposed to look like a skeleton in this scene. It's supposed to physically represent her addiction. But damn, I mean, she just has two little dots for her nose. She doesn't have any composition to her nose at all. Her eyeballs are enormous. And what is up with that mouth? It, it's colored in all white, which th this could be the fault of the colorer. I think this was intended to be no teeth and to be a dark mouth, but they colored it white, which makes it kind of look like all of her mouth is teeth. It's just, it's odd looking. Her eyes are bigger than her mouth. She has a shrunken in face. She has no neck. It's, this is just a really weird piece and I understand what he was going for, but this one is, uh, this one's pretty funny. Next up, we have Green Goblin, Volume 1, Number 6, from 1996. Penciled by Scott McDaniels and inked by Derek Fisher. Now, I will say the art in this is intentionally over the top and wacky, and they have a lot of outrageous designs and shapes to the human figure, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> what is this? Why is he posing like he's gonna be the cover model of an Aeropostale magazine or something. The pose and the facial expression and his little mouth and that long pointed nose are bad enough, but what kills this is that shading on the side of his face. They're trying to have half of his face draped in shadow, but the shadow's not draped onto anything else. It doesn't match anything. It's too much, and <laughs> this one just totally fails. And then just a few pages later, it gets worse. I can't believe somebody actually drew this. Where do you even start on this one? You know what? I know where to start. That big ass mouth. Is this real? I mean, it's pretty obvious. They gave him the biggest mouth in a panel of any comic ever. Why is his mouth so big? And I know that this whole book has exaggerated art, but a human's mouth cannot even get close to that big. See, I tried and I failed. You tried and you failed. I mean, I can't even believe this. He looks like the llama from Emperor's New Groove. And you know what? That text underneath him is fitting. I. <laughs> Next up is Spider-Man number 39 from 1993, illustrated by Klaus Janssen. I gotta say, this might be the absolute worst illustrated comic from page to page 
that I've ever seen and definitely that I own. These pages are absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe that they publish this art. I'm sorry to Klaus Jansen, I'm not familiar with your art. Um, you might be a great artist, but this one just didn't do it. Something was way off on this one and it's pretty hilarious. Right when you open it up, page after page is butts. I am genuinely shocked that this was drawn by somebody above the age of six. I mean, just look at this. Look at this man. Look at the scribbly, nonsense, vomit pile of lines on his face. Look at that mangled, disgusting, curved, fat hand. The man has no facial features. He literally just scribbled in lines for his eyeballs. This is 90s comic book art at its finest or at its worst. This sums up all of the worst parts of 90s comic book art. This is, look at this. This is terrible. I am genuinely fascinated about how this comic got made. How did this get past anybody? How did anybody see this and not laugh? How did anybody see this and not crap their pants? How was this allowed? Somebody got paid money to do this. This is, this is unbelievable. Uh, look at that arm. That is the worst arm I have ever seen in a comic book. No joke. Look at the anatomy of that arm. It is busted. It is swollen. It is sideways. That is... Look at the hand! Look at that hand! Okay, I understand that this comic was drawn with, with intent. Like, he meant to scribble all of this. It had a meaning to it. But did he draw with his non-dominant hand? I mean, look at this garbage. This is not hyperbole. This literally looks like something I drew when I was five or six. My God. And if you go one page forward, <laughs> I'm actually glad that this comic book was made and that I picked it up randomly one day because this is bringing me so much joy. This might be the worst drawing I have ever seen in a mainstream comic. And honestly, I love it. This is amazing. <sighs> it's cold. It's, it's shocking how this was sent in. This was drawn by a human, sent in. Somebody said, yes, color that. Somebody colored it. Then they, they printed it. They printed it for our eyes. And I thank you. Mwah. I thank you, uh, Klaus Johnson. I thank you, Marvel. I thank you, everybody who made this comic. Thank you because this, looking at this the past couple days uh, for this video, this has made me laugh an enormous amount. This has been a, a, a humongous treat. The first treat of 2021 is this comic. If, if you do not own this comic, genuinely, go pick this up because the art is so bad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to the artist, but this art is so bad and and you know what i love it it's good it brings joy to my life and i hope it can bring some joy to yours because this is hilarious i mean i don't want to keep hounding on the guy but look at this every page that you look there is something terrible i could have made just a whole video on just this issue look at this picture look at that eyeball his eyeball is drawn over his mask his eyeball is sunken and fallen down above his mask. There's no color to it. It's, it's, it's amazingly horrible. This absolutely gets my award for the worst comic book art I have ever seen, front to back overall, all 32 pages. This is terrible in a great way. If you do not have this issue, Spider-Man number 39 from 1993, you need to purchase this issue if you want to laugh, if you want to cry, if you want to say goodbye to 2020 and bring in 2021 with a positive attitude, please get this comic. Thank you. Mwah. On to the next one, which is Superman number 130 from 1959, illustrated by Al Plastino. Uh, this one's gonna be short and quick. All throughout this comic, there is a constant. Superman be thick. Superman has got the dad bod. I mean, look at this. He's got dad bod 9000. He, his torso is so thick. I've never seen 
such a thickness of a torso compared to the size of someone's arms and their head. It's, it's just laughable. And it's not insanely egregious because on almost every single page, he draws him this thick. It was obviously intentional. But with all due respect to Al Plastino, this is not what humans look like. This is, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just funny. Now this next one is a more recent one, Batman The Dark Knight Volume 4 Clay from 2014. A collection illustrated by multiple people, but the section that I will be looking at was illustrated by Alberto Ponticelli. Yeah, you know, I flip through, I flip through, yeah, this is pretty good. I flip through, tiny arm. Yes, Alberto Ponticelli has drawn this man with an unfortunate tiny arm. This man has tiny arm syndrome. I get that he was doing a perspective shot, like he's supposed to be pointing this way, but the way that it's drawn in the shadows, it doesn't look like it's a perspective, it just looks like he has tiny arm. This man just has a tiny arm, and he has a weird square crooked jaw. This one's not one of the most egregious examples, but I thought it was pretty funny and I had to add it to the list. Okay, we just have a couple more. And next up is Doctor Strange Classics from 1984, illustrated by the great Steve Ditko. Now, I am a huge fan of Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby. Those guys were absolute monsters of the industry, pioneers of comic book art. But honestly, in today's standards, some of their art doesn't really hold up. Steve Ditko has inspired so many artists and done so much for modern day comic book art. But honestly, sometimes you just look at some of his pages and go, what now? Ooh, that does not hold up. And something that they constantly did back in the day was draw exaggerated faces and hands. They drew big hands, big wide faces. They were known for it. It wasn't out of the ordinary, <laughs> but damn. That's the biggest hand I've ever seen. I have pretty big hands, and even my hands don't cover my whole head when I put them up to it. But look at those hands. I mean, what else do I have to say about this? Look at those hands. Those are some big ass hands. But I forgive you, Steve. All right, one more. And you know, I feel like anything I show at this point is gonna be a big disappointment because it all pales in comparison to that Spider-Man comic. That was the worst one, so, you know, we got one more, so here you go. Silver Surfer, Volume 3, number 81 from 1993, penciled by Ron Lim. And I'm not going to mention the inker here, because this one is purely Ron Lim's fault. The inker couldn't have done anything about this. This is all in the pencils. He got broke neck. What can I say? He got a broke neck. But really, I tried testing this in the mirror. I couldn't even get my neck to come close to doing this. He breaks the anatomy. And even though it's a silver surfer, his body still works like a human's. You still have to draw him realistically. And a person just cannot have their, their head just totally straight, but have their body sideways, but the head stay straight with the neck ball. That, that, this, Imagine waking up in the middle of the night to this. You're sound asleep, having a good night's rest. Then you open your eyes to, yeah! It's just wacky, man. And you know what? 90s comic book art is, it's just a gift that keeps on giving. And I mean, what do you expect? This is a comic book from 1993 with an ad for the Super Mario Brothers movie in it. Of course it's gonna have broke neck. I mean, yeah, so necks don't do that, and it's just like, what in the hell? On the next page over is an ad for the X-Men Sega Genesis game. And look at that. Look at that artwork. What is that? I will tell you, man, the 90s comic book scene was a crazy place. They must have really been hurting for artists back then. I know they were, but, but good lord, they were really taking some chances here. 
look at his droopy his droopy mask ears they're 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 flinging around like bunny ears look at look at that art that looks like like side sidewalk chalk art from a kid i did not know this was in here this is a genuine surprise <laughs> oh man that's terrible and you know what i love it Seriously, as someone who used to have a passion about drawing comics, it's what I used to want to do. I definitely understand how hard and time consuming it is just to draw one page, let alone drawing a whole comic book in time for them to color it and letter it and do all that stuff and print it all under a month to get a monthly issue out. It is a stressful, difficult job, and I honestly don't envy it. But I do love it. Good comic art, bad comic art, whatever it is. I just love to analyze it, to look at it, to poke fun at it, to laugh at it. And good or bad, it just brings me joy. I love it. And like I said, I only went through about a fourth of my comics to get these examples. So definitely expect more of these videos because this was fun as hell. I love to laugh at it. I love to discover the bad art. And this was just fun. So, until we meet again, peace! Hey! If you like this video, and you want to see more of my ridiculous content, check out one of these. Maybe you'll enjoy yourself, or maybe you'll watch it and crap your pants. Click one and let's find out!